once upon a time, this man was voted by his cave mates the most likely to stay alive because he had such native talents as sharp teeth, big muscles, and Caliban carried a big stick. Ah, but that long ago. Today, Caliban the caveman would be a hopeless, cowardly misfit at any intersection confronted with machines we take for granted or confronted with the simplest of problems. Question, why is Caliban the caveman such a frightened misfit in the middle of the 20th century? And what has this to do with you? Well, our story begins approximately 20,000 years ago in caves in Western Europe, where we find man exercising one talent that distinguishes him from all animals on this planet, the ability to draw pictures and through pictures to communicate with other human beings distant in time and space. Thousands of years went into the refinement of this exclusively human talent until it flowered into the first crude alphabets, ideographic writing, where the symbol or picture stands for the idea. This might represent a house, but how do you represent the idea of home? It has been written that way, but I don't think for most of us it quite carries the meaning we like to associate with home. By 2000 BC, man had perfected cuneiform or wedge-shaped writing on clay tablets, but it had a different kind of drawback. <laughs> For over 4,000 years, man wrote on papyrus rolls made from the papyrus reed that grew in the Nile River. In those days, there were no paragraphs, no space between words, not even punctuation. Papyrus like clay had its disadvantages. For example, it would have taken 60 average sized papyrus rolls to hold all Shakespeare's plays and sonnets or one continuous roll 1,800 feet long capable of reaching from the top of the Empire State Building all the way down to the street. Papyrus was followed by parchment or prepared animal hides. The hide of the young animal was called vellum. Today the words parchment and vellum are used interchangeably. But where did today's book come from? And here you see the answer, the wax-coated wooden tablet on which Greeks and Romans wrote with a metal stylus. Man figured out these wooden tablets could be hinged together with leather thongs. Then the final step came with the hinging or tying together of parchment or vellum pages, the clumsy great daddy of today's millions of books. During the so-called Dark Ages from approximately 500 AD to 1500, manuscripts were copied by thousands of monks in monasteries all over Europe and Asia Minor. These monks kept alive books and the love of books by their patient copying throughout the centuries-long night that had descended on the Western world. And curiously, or perhaps not so curiously, it was during this twilight time that perhaps the most beautiful books in all history were produced. And this was a time when monks trudged everywhere to borrow or copy precious holy books. Take our friend here in Ireland. Name Aloysius, destination, library of the monastery at Monte Cassino, Italy. Purpose, to copy a certain sacred book. We'll check up on you later, Aloysius. After the monasteries came the universities as the collectors, editors, and copiers of books. Universities loan books to students, true, but there was a string attached. In open stack libraries today, there are no strings or chains attached. In those days, students and faculty were required to wear caps and gowns in the library. Not precisely the case today in most American universities. Meanwhile, the thousand-year sleep that had begun in the 5th century was coming to an end. With the 15th century came the Renaissance. The Renaissance, or the great rebirth of knowledge. A time when men rediscovered the meaning of intellectual freedom. Freedom to read pagan Latin classics, freedom to read pre-Christian Greek giants. It was a time when Christian artists produced their masterpieces. It was a time indeed whose motto was, men can do all things if they will.
and a man at this precise moment in history did perfect a means of printing rapidly. The man who accomplished the mechanical miracle was Johann Gutenberg, an obscure German printer, and in 1450 started a torrent of print that within the next 50 years, presses modeled after his committed more printed words to paper than man had been able to write by hand in his entire previous history. From this simple but revolutionary hand press came not only man's past, locked in print, but today's complicated and efficient presses pouring forth millions of words a day. Millions of words a day, quite a contrast to Brother Aloysius, who will take over a million steps to copy just one book. Today, the storehouse for this printed record is the library. And on every campus, the library is the hub of intellectual activity. Now, here's a big man on campus, and he's interested in what this library has that just might interest him. Right, young man? Suppose then we, well, if it isn't Caliban the caveman. Now, there's a real big, big man on campus, but I don't suppose he'd be interested in the library. Would you, Cal? You would? All right, then, suppose we go inside. No, no, Cal, use the door. Oh. <laughs> Well, thanks to Cal, we're just in time for the movie. See, cavemen aren't exactly at home in the 20th century. Joe, suppose you and I take a quick ramble through the library, okay? A library is still primarily a collection of the printed record or books. But today a library also has other means of making thought or feeling available in lasting form. save a lot of time in a library if you know what you're looking for. For example, here's a young lady who does. Notice the time she saves. thing as taking it easy too, just browsing, like this fellow. Well, maybe he's taking it too easy. But not all reading is done in the library, Joe, not by a long shot.
In this increasingly complicated world, you can't just rely on your native talents. If you do, like Caliban, you'll be afraid, bewildered, unequipped for making a living, incapable of understanding the world you live in. It is in the library that you will find the written, recorded, pictured history of man's journey through time and space to the farthermost frontiers of man's artistic imagination. Your library, centuries in the coming, now yours for the using. Say, like to know what happened to Aloysius the Monk? By the time Aloysius arrived at the monastery at Monte Cassino, Italy, it was out of business. The moral is, don't take that long getting to your library. Right, Brother Aloysius? <laughs>